So I'm not exercising the horse here, just in case you might think so. There's a purpose. <laughs> Chain? No. No chain today. I left the chain in that white. Oh, white pickup. There you can hold me in. Well, we're gonna drop this bigger bale off. I think it's probably like a half ton. These are older mares. They're having a hard time living in the pasture. Just because they're getting older. She's ready to go. She's tired of this. Uh... Yeah. Tired of this hard life of living out in the ranch. The ranch tough. She wants to go uh, be back in the she's pen. The, the corral or stable where she's lived most of her life. So why are we feeding these guys? Why do we bring hay to these guys and not all the others? Well, these are the older bunch. These are mares that are pretty old, 18 to 22, 23. Salty, or uh, not Salty, but Texas. He even has some age on him. They don't do real well out in the pasture. Texas is here. They weren't raised here. These were all horses that came out of somebody's backyard that had good breeding, but you know they just uh, didn't raise them out on the range. And so they have a little harder time surviving out there especially when it's this late in the winter and feeds dried and if there is a little bit of green they're chasing a the green that they can't even get so we're just going to put them in on feed and, and then we'll actually offer all of these mares here for sale once they're um, bred up we'll confirm that they're bred missy too missy may not go missy may stay she might actually be bred up. She's just in here because she's old. Uh, she was in the pasture. She just started falling off, so we'll put some feed to her. But these other three are open. Those are definitely open mares. And they're gonna be early bred to to Texas Blue Valentine. Yeah, they should start cycling. Yeah, they should uh, start this, month. this month. And if they don't get bred in their first cycle, then we'll. Leave them till second cycle and we'll check them. They'll still be pretty early for our breeding. We yeah, don't like them early too, too early. Because we'll still get some snow um, probably sometime in this next 30 days, be my guess. We usually do. Late March or early April. Snow sometimes fall, which I hope it does. We need the moisture. So if you want an aged broodmare, we'll have like four. Yeah, Maybe these, more. These we may have four. There's going to be four in here. There may be two others that are out. I just haven't decided whether I'm going to sell those or not. Maybe so, Missy. Maybe Missy. She's bred. Na Nancy really loves that mare. That's her mare. And she was uh, with. Uh, who was she, she was with, with uh, True Blue. True Blue. True Blue. is that? Henson pulled the new trailer down here. Pulled it next to that one so I can start switching everything over. And then I'm gonna sell that white one. So I'm gonna get busy doing that and then I need to ride 
a few horses down here before Connor's game. Oh my gosh, that's all we do is baseball. That's why I haven't been doing ranchy videos is because all we do right now is baseball. So let's go swap the stuff into the new trailer and then I'll ride Vixen and Ghost and uh, who else is down here? Dibs. I'll catch the other horses and brush them, get them ready for a Henson to ride this afternoon and see how far we get. I guess I better give you guys a tour of my new trailer. Um, so this is a Logan. I wasn't looking for a Logan trailer. I wanted a Wilson stock combo, but though they're super hard to get. So we saw this one down in the valley for sale and trailers are crazy right now. So a new one, a brand new one costs the same as a used one. And this is what we went with. Um, it's just a totally open box. There are no gates. Uh, it's seven foot three inches. So the horses can stand all the way across. They don't have to be slanted. So I bet I can fit probably four horses in here, which is fine with me because I don't like to haul 20 horses. Um, but yeah, it's got this rhino lining spray all the way around, even on the outside. This is the, uh, flooring <laughs> uh sure grip flooring i guess is what they call it um it uh has, is porous i guess so if they pee or whatever it just leaks out of there let's see sure grip rubber flooring permanent never pull mats again self-draining antimicrobial superior traction easy to clean and maintain reduces ammonia odor odors whiz proof flooring drainable slatted aluminum floor original self-draining floor made to drain without you drilling structural damaging holes um, aluminum floor planks vortex spray rubber coated eight-year warranty giving you peace of mind so that's nice to have. Um, we really wanted a double gate in the back, but unless you custom order, you get what you get. I'm so excited to have hooks on the outside because mine, they all broke. I was having to tie horses through this here in the bars and that wasn't fun. So this is really going to be a luxury for me. <laughs> um, let me grab the key here and let's open this up. Okay. So this is fancy to me. This deal catches right there, I guess the first time I used it. This is the saddle blanket rack deal i've never had anything like that windows that open here is the nose it's fully carpeted um those windows slide open too there's a bar up there to hang your shirts i guess and your bridle hooks this is carpeted here see all the spray in here too um, give us a nice uh, I don't know what it's called <laughs> wonder what this is maybe that's a step I don't know to jump up here <gasps> I don't know that's what it could work for I guess <laughs> and the saddle rack it's supposed to swing out See if I can figure this out. Ooh. I guess you just move it like that. It's not clipped back or anything. It just 
swing forward. First time I've done, woo! First time I've done that. Okay, so that's it. There's a, uh, see this stuff is all sprayed too, all the way around and up. And there is a light right there, pretty cool. My other trailer had the spare tire deal in the inside, which was not convenient or fun to deal with. So that's nice having a tire out here. Yeah, there she is. Super duper exciting. So I don't know how much of this swapping out stuff I'll get done, but I'm gonna try and do most of it before I start riding. Um, I have, gosh, I don't know, an hour, two hours before I have to go to the game. <sighs> Shoot. Okay, I'm going to get to work. There's a rake. <laughs> There's some um, of my bits that I use all the time. Um, halters, two saddles, my boots, sport boots, everything else that's in that trailer is basically stuff for just in case. So maybe I need to keep this trailer and use it as a storage for like grain and stuff since I don't have a barn. So, I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. See, all this stuff in here I don't really use. There's some bits I don't really use. Uh, halters, like I, baby halters. I don't really use. They're just in here. I guess I could put the shavings in there, but I don't need them right now. So, I guess I'm done. So, I just got everything moved over and was gonna ride, but look at that craziness. It started pouring and you can hear it. It's really pouring out there. Oh. So, I'm just sitting in the trailer, the new trailer, and figured I'd tell you a little bit about my horse trailer journey. Um, so I bought that trailer about 12 years ago and paid cash for it. It was $4,000. I didn't really know what I wanted. I didn't know um, how far my horse journey was going to take me or what I would be doing in five or ten years. Wow. It's hailing now. It's probably kind of loud, so I'm going to pause and I'm going to come back when that hail stops. Okay, we're back. Um, that was kind of crazy. It like really came and then it just stopped. It's like completely gone now. <laughs> um, okay, so I bought that trailer 12 years ago. And over the years, it's kind of fallen apart. The hooks came off. Um, somebody backed into my wheel well. That sucked. Um, a horse backed into the door. So that's kind of bent. Um, but it's been a good trailer. I've hauled many, many places with it. We've, um, enjoyed it while we've had it, but I was ready for a new one. I was looking for a Wilson for a long time. I wanted a Wilson, uh, ranch hand, 
I think is what they call it. It has the tack area and the stock back and I wanted double doors in the back and just could never find one unless we ordered one and they were always like almost a year out. So I saw this one down in Apache Junction, Arizona. Finally bit the bullet and just bought it. Um, I really like a lot of the features of this trailer and hopefully it can help us on the ranch a little bit. I really didn't buy it uh, to be a ranch trailer at all. Um, but if we do need it for that, we can use it. Um, we can haul some cows in the back and haul it around the ranch. They said that um, you can get kind of ranchy with these trailers and they'll hold up. Um, so we'll just see how it goes. I, I don't think trailers are getting any cheaper um, and used ones are just as much as the new ones. So I'm happy to finally have something brand new. All of our vehicles are used and very old. We've paid cash for everything that we've bought, except our tractor, we bought that new. That is one thing that we um, didn't pay cash for. I don't know what Henson thinks, but I think he likes it. <laughs> um, the rain has stopped. So I guess I'll start catching horses and riding. Um, like I said a little bit earlier, I haven't been posting many ranchy videos and I know that most people are here to see the cowboy stuff, um, but I don't go out with Henson every single day. He does that every day and I'm like, good video, but he doesn't. It's just, it's just how it goes around here. Um, Things are getting done on the ranch all the time. Every day, Henson right now is pushing cows that have got through some fences. Um, that's like almost an everyday thing. <laughs> Jerry is always pumping water and doing all his stuff. So when I can get out to Cowboy, um, I get the content. So um, for now, for these last few videos, barrel racing, selling horses, whatever. Um, I hope you guys still enjoy it. We are gonna be so busy here in the next few months. Um, mares need to be separated, stallions need to be gathered up, and everything needs to be um, ready for spring breeding. And we're gonna be really busy doing that. We'll be gathering horses and putting horses out. Branding, can't forget branding. We'll be doing all of that stuff. So um, please stay subscribed. <laughs> I promise we will have more cowboy stuff coming really soon. Okay, I'm going to go ride horses now. Okay, guys, the rain is not stopping. Um, I'm just going to head to the house and finish up some things and edit a video. Yesterday, I heard thunder, and I don't think it was the first thunder of the year. There was one time before that like in February, but um, it is a Navajo tradition um, when the first, when you hear the first thunder that you get up and stretch and offer a prayer. And if you want to learn more about it, go ahead and look that up. Um, but yeah, the first thunder has um, a significance in the Navajo culture. So we'll check it out. Go learn about that fun stuff. Yatta hey everyone, Henson Wynn from Navajo, Arizona. So Danielle took this video clip of me and this filly, two-year-old filly that I've been working with. I saddled her up and let her go in this bigger pin just because I want to um, work on her being caught in this bigger pin. I've been doing it in the round pin and she's been facing me real nice and really nice to catch. And I thought, well, let me work on it in this bigger pin. Just let's see if she pays attention. And, uh, and you'll see it's, um, it takes a while. It takes like five minutes before I actually, you know, catch her again. She runs around, but I, I think it's good for a horse to, um, uh, be in a bigger pin and you work them in a bigger pin on just being caught because it sucks to, of course, uh, go and catch a horse and it takes you like 30 minutes before it lets you catch it. 
So this is something we just worked on here. I saddle her up and I let her go. And she just goes back and forth, back and forth down this fence line, of course, because there's other horses over there and she wants to go back with them or go see them. So I just kind of let her, I pressure her a little bit if she wants to stop or if she um, just stands there. I'll pressure her if, you know, if she's not moving. But I think she pretty much moves the whole time. She kind of has a lot of energy. Oh, she kind of stopped right there. But, you know, I just approach her and if she doesn't want to stand there, I just let her, I just let her go. Same thing as I do in the round pin. I think Danielle probably had a few videos of me working in the round pin and teaching a horse to face. That's something big for me um, when I'm in the round pin is to get them to face me and follow me around. I hate a horse that turns their butt to me. And, um, of course, I want one to catch nice. And, and if... If they're catching really good in the round pin and facing and not running around, um, I won't ever push them. I mean, I maybe will just a little bit, let them go around me, if, see if they'll face me when I say, whoa. Um, but I don't just put them in there and let them chase them around to exercise them. I'd rather just get on them and ride them if I want them to get exercise. So I'm not exercising the horse here, just in case you might think so. There's a purpose. Same thing in round pin. So there's always kind of a purpose, not just letting them run around. Um, I do the same thing with Danielle. Um, when I want her to pay attention to me or give me some Danielle time, I'll chase her around. Maybe I'll even spank her, just kind of like I do with these uh, horses, maybe when they're around pin, if they put their butt to me, I'll, I'll spank it, and I'll, I'll do the same thing to her. If she's not paying attention and turning her butt to me, I'll spank her. And this horse uh, right here, she kind of pays attention and stops. But then she leaves again. I'm like, all right, well, just leave. I kind of threw that lead rope out there. Because, um, well, if you want to leave, then leave hard. And I, I don't pressure her a bunch here just because that, you know, I don't want her to go over the fence. But in a better pin, I might, I might pressure him harder to know that, hey, if I'm paying attention to this guy, it's a whole lot nicer than him pressuring me, making me leave. <laughs> I think it was windy too i think that that wind kind of scared her right there so it's good for for her being in the wind too and i don't think she uh has too many rides in, uh, by the time by the time uh, danielle took this video she's pretty pretty green but really nice horse she's a blazing gentleman daughter she's really um responsive um really light when you pick up the lead and ask her to move her feet, she's really, really light. Really nice horse. She's going to be super cool. So, yeah, she stops right here, and she pays attention to me pretty good. She doesn't want to leave. Um, but she would if I asked her to. I'm wanting her to follow me around right here, but she doesn't really want to go this, you know, to, to, to the right. She's looking at me, but I could tell if I, if I keep moving, she'll just kind of take off. So, ah, you know, I'm going to. Go this other way. And she follows me around really good right here. Which I thought was good. So I end up just catching her. And um, I'm pretty sure I go ride her after this. But Danielle didn't get a video of that. But, but uh, yeah, she's a super nice horse. So, yeah, if you want uh, your your uh, wife or husband to pay attention to you, um, just follow them around. Maybe chase them around the living room or wherever. And, They'll eventually pay attention to you. Maybe even smack them on the butt. They'll get their attention. All right. Thanks for watching. She went with this one because... <laughs> Woo! Um, that swung open. See? I don't even know how to work the key yet. I know which way it goes. Jeez. Okay, does it go up or down? Okay, that way. So, for next time, the thingy goes up. That way's locked. Let's unlock it.